Like a lot of fans of the SCP Foundation universe, we've often theorized about the coolest versus battles we can imagine here on SCP Explained. Whether it's warring gods, researchers, or anomalies, who doesn't love a good fight? But ever since we've started taking mandatory anger management counseling after the pudding cup incident in the Site-19 break room, we've decided to reorient our focus a little. That's why today, we're going to talk about teamwork and friendship. Namely, which teams, friendships, and alliances would lead to the deadliest outcomes. Hey, look, nobody's perfect, but together certain anomalous duos do have the power to be perfectly deadly. That's why we're going to give you a whirlwind rundown of our ultimate matches made in hell. These are the deadliest SCP combinations we could possibly find. SCP-096 The Shy Guy and SCP-035 The Possessive Mask. We begin with the very duo that inspired this list. As we all know by this point, SCP-096 is an indestructible mindless monster that is extremely distressed by the idea of somebody seeing its face. So much so that it'll activate the creature's rage state and result in an instant and gruesome death for everyone involved. And SCP-035 is an evil mind-controlling mask that constantly secretes a corrosive black liquid, which gradually breaks down the bodies of anyone wearing it, forcing it to seek out new hosts. If 096 and 035 entered a symbiotic relationship, it'd be curtains for the rest of us, as they enhance each other's strengths and neutralize each other's weaknesses. 096 is unstoppable but mindless, and 035 has a diabolically brilliant mind with no permanent body. Wearing 035, 096 would no longer need to worry about anyone seeing its face. The body would also regenerate faster than 035's corrosive slime could melt it, resulting in a host that it could presumably keep forever. With intellect, psychic powers, and raw strength and speed, there'd truly be no stopping this horrible abomination. SCP-106 The Old Man and SCP-303 The Doorman These two are the wingmen from Hell, working in tandem to ensure the ultimate combinations of fear, pain, and suffering. 106 The Monstrous Old Man is a pure sadist that can walk through walls and loves to take his time torturing his hapless victims with reckless abandon. He's methodical, but slow, meaning there's at least a chance for escape in the short term. SCP-303 The Doorman is a far more mysterious beast. He appears behind doors and induces a sense of paralytic terror within his victims, making them physically unable to open the door until he materializes to go mess with somebody else. Picture this, you're just chilling in your bedroom loving life when you hear a fizzling sound. You look up to see that it's SCP-106, his grinning face melting through the wall. Immediately fight or flight kicks in but you know you're not fighting this guy. However, running can't save you this time. You try to make it to the door, but it's too late. You're boxed in. You can see that freakish grinning Langlier on the other side, and even with the horror of the old man on your tail, you just can't summon the will to overcome the fear and leave. It's perfect, for them at least, as the old man gets to really take his time with you, knowing that escape was never really an option, and we're sure 303 just likes to watch. SCP-049 The Plague Doctor and SCP-1765 The Sisters A scientific mind can be a wonderful thing, when it's used for good. However, when you apply the cold scientific methodologies of a scientist to the pursuit of evil, you will often find a far greater depravity than anything summoned up by a violent barbarian or brute. That's where this deadly combo comes into play. The Plague Doctor is a self-proclaimed man of medical science, intent on curing the pestilence whenever he sees it. But funnily enough, this seems to mostly involve killing people and turning them into zombies. The Sisters, similarly, are a group of spectral reality warpers, with strong beliefs that their twisted games are actually marvelous feats of science. Like 049, they see themselves as peers to the SCP Foundation, collecting valuable data. If ever these so-called scientists go chatting and decided to compare notes, the result would not only be a truly terrifying brain trust, but some of the most twisted and terrifying experiments that humankind has ever witnessed. And of course, in their own warped minds, it would all be done in the service of the greater good. SCP-682 The Hard to Destroy Reptile and SCP-058 The Heart of Darkness Sometimes the best way to make a new friend is through a common interest. 
such as just loving malicious destruction in its purest forms. The Heart to Destroy Reptile and the Heart of Darkness both seem to hate pretty much everything except causing mass chaos, which they're both extremely good at. But we think that they could be even better at it if they were working together. 682 is able to adapt to and reverse any attack used against it, and tear through Foundation personnel like a tissue in a paper shredder. 058 takes real joy in trampling, whipping things to death with its spiked tendrils, and firing flaming acid out of its scorpion stinger. Couple this with the fact that both are pretty much indestructible, and you've got a duo that could really paint the town red with everyone else's blood. Considering how extremely difficult it is to wrangle even one of these monsters, the Foundation would need to deploy everything they have to handle a dual containment breach. And even then, it's a real coin toss as to whether any of them would even be able to stop this duo of evil monsters. SCP-173 The Sculpture and SCP-268 The Cap of Neglect Let's leave team-ups behind for a second and go back to this video's roots. An iconic anomaly with a piece of headgear that makes them way more dangerous. In this case, it's SCP-173 The Sculpture with SCP-268 The Cap of Neglect. SCP-173 is the OG, and it'll treat your neck like a wishbone if you don't give it constant attention. This is where a certain cursed new boy cap comes in. 268 is a cap that basically makes you impossible to pay attention to, and its effects only get stronger the longer you wear it. Eventually, this leads to the wearer becoming a kind of unperson, simply impossible to interact with, even when the cap is taken off. Of course, while this would be a complete existential nightmare for a human being wearing it, it'd be an absolute dream for SCP-173. After absorbing the Cap of Neglect's powers, 173 would become a truly unstoppable killing machine. Only direct and constant attention would be able to keep 173 paralyzed, so when it's physically impossible to pay any kind of attention to it, it also becomes impossible to stop. It could snap itself across the globe, and there's nothing that any of us could do about it. SCP-993 Bobble the Clown and SCP-2030 Laugh is Fun Who doesn't love a good crossover, right? Remember when you watched cartoons as a kid? How exciting it'd be when a crossover special came on, and you got to see all your favorite characters from different shows interacting with each other. That's what we're proposing with the true TV event of the century. The Bobble the Clown and Laugh is Fun crossover. This pair of anomalous TV shows are plenty frightening on their own. Bobble being a clown that makes kids do terrible things, and Laugh is Fun being a hidden camera prank show that makes your worst nightmares real. The two of them together would make you laugh so hard, you scream. We predict that this laugh riot might turn into an actual riot. Perhaps with their combined powers, they could double their audience, and also double the sinister effects of their broadcasts. Needless to say, if these two ever did team up for this incredible piece of television, you'd see a notable uptick in murders whenever it was broadcast. SCP-4153, It Came From Site-19, and SCP-701, The Hanged King's Tragedy. There's a well-known phrase in performing arts, the show must go on. And this is certainly a very nice sentiment, until the players are a selection of living wax mannequins with a major dramatic streak. And the play is an eldritch horror that causes chaos and madness wherever and whenever it's performed. That's right. SCP-4153 is a selection of living wax thespians modeled after famous Universal movie monsters, and also iconic character actor Vincent Price. And while they typically work on the haunted house circuit, they'd love to hit the real stage, even if the heat of the footlights makes them go a little droopy. And what would be a better play for these dramatic, unkillable weirdos than the legendary Carolinian classic, The Hanged King's Tragedy? It always brings the house down into an orgy of terror and bloodshed. Considering that, unlike most non-anomalous players, SCP-4153 may actually survive their first performance of the tragedy. They'd be free to perform it again and again and again, racking up more bodies each time. But like we said, the show must go on. SCP-3280 After the Storm and SCP-009 Red Ice A wise Time Lord once said, Water always wins. After all, you can't even really kill water. You can only change its form. And even then, only temporarily, it'll always come back. It's in us and all around us. When water goes rogue, there's truly no way of fighting back. 
It's for that reason that SCP-3280, the nightmarish living water dubbed after the storm, is so terrifying. But we know how we could make it even more dangerous, mixing it with SCP-009 Red Ice. This chemically impossible nightmare converts into ice crystals as its temperature rises, meaning that it getting inside a human body is a death sentence, as it turns into flesh-rending ice crystals. If you couple that even more deadly nature of SCP-009 into the frightening speed and intelligence of SCP-3280, and they reach their combined goal of entering the water cycle, then an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario is basically an inevitability. SCP-5049 Demon Dance Discount Homunculus Depot and SCP-1879 Indoor Salesman We'd like to start this entry by pouring one out for the original Demon Dan. As fans of our first video on him may recall, his mysterious demonic superiors blew up his head after he was captured by the SCP Foundation to prevent him from giving up sensitive information. We imagine this kind of thing happens a lot, and it results in the discount homunculus depot needing new go-getting salesmen to move products and meet quotas. Enter SCP-1879, the indoor salesman and ultimate hard bargain driver. He's underappreciated at his old job and looking for work that might lead him to getting headhunted by SCP-5049, and with the increased power given to him by the Demon Lords, his operation will move from just covering Washington to popping up anywhere and everywhere. And what's more, he might now have a whole new gaggle of impish assistants. With that kind of setup, we can only imagine he'd be a hell of a boss. SCP-4666 The Yule Man and SCP-784 Christmas Cheer Are you longing for the holidays? Do you wish it could be Christmas every day? Trust us, you're not the only one. Our good friend, the terrifying sadistic Yule Man, also wishes for a little more Christmas, considering he can only actually operate during 12 days out of the year. However, this wouldn't be the case if he made himself a new home just outside of SCP-784 the neighborhood where it really is Christmas every single day. Here it presumably stands to reason that these two anomalies could form a terrifying symbiotic relationship, where the Yule Man could operate on any day of the year, becoming significantly more dangerous and taking lives, or worse, whenever he feels like it. It's safe to say if the Yule Man decided to set up a new grotto in SCP-784, he'd be the only one experiencing some Christmas cheer around here. SCP-076-2 Abel and SCP-4955 Knife If there are three things that you know about Abel, it's probably these three things. He's got a potentially biblical backstory, he comes out of a giant stone coffin, and he's really, really good with edged weaponry. Abel can produce his own blades from thin air, yanking them out of pocket dimensions whenever he needs them. But personally, we'd think he'd be even more dangerous if he got his hands on SCP-4955, also known simply as Knife. Knife is an interesting anomaly, initially thought to have anti-memetic properties, seeing as nobody except the user is able to acknowledge it or anything it does, but the reality is that it has even more bizarre memetic properties. The knife forces everyone except the user to play their part in a huge practical joke, where everybody pretends to not notice the knife or its actions in order to gaslight the user. However, if the knife was in Abel's hands, the joke would definitely be on them. He'd be the perfect assassin, cutting down scores of victims while nobody could even acknowledge that he was the perpetrator. SCP-001 The Gate Guardian and SCP-1179 The Centralian Fire Demon Friends need to have things in common to make a friendship work. After all, common interests are often the basis for all engaging conversations. That's why it stands to reason that the giant flaming warrior known as SCP-001 The Gate Guardian would probably get along famously with the giant flaming warrior known as SCP-1179, the Centralian Fire Demon. This devoted soldier of angelic light and his new cantankerous Balrog buddy would likely have a lot to say to each other and become an almost unstoppable fighting duo together. They're both ancient, impossibly large, with immensely powerful flame-based weaponry, and presumably a fair bit of battle knowledge. It would also take a truly special enemy to take on these two together, and even survive, let alone win. Between them, they might even stand a chance against other impossibly large creatures, like the Devourer of Worlds. And if nothing else, it would likely be an incredible fight to witness unfold, even if you died immediately after. SCP-2094 Motormouth and SCP-323 Wendigo Skull 
And so we once again return to this video's mainstay, an already powerful anomaly being made far more dangerous by a piece of anomalous headwear. We are nothing if not consistent, folks. Admittedly, SCP-2094, also known by his circus stage name Motormouth, isn't exactly an aggressive anomaly. He's a reasonable chatty guy who just so happens to have an impossibly stretchy jaw and a seemingly limitless pocket dimension in his stomach. All good stuff if you're in the mood for some bizarre party tricks. However, this becomes a lot more sinister if he's made to wear SCP-323, also known as the Wendigo Skull. This cursed skull is imbued with the spirit of the legendary Algonquin monster known as the Wendigo, a beast so dangerous that even saying its name can be risky. In putting on the skull, the wearer is possessed and descends into a state of violent cannibalism. Of course, this is bad enough on its own, but on someone like Motormouth, where there's no real ceiling on what he's capable of eating, the skull could force him to devour thousands of people. He'd go from a charming circus act to a hungry weapon of mass destruction in no time making these two a deadly SCP combination. SCP-4973 Dead Men and SCP-2419 The Laughing Men. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions, is probably what the Foundation thought when first discovering both SCP-4973 The Dead Men and SCP-2419 The Laughing Men. That's because these two groups have something in common. They're the ghoulish remnants of D-classes killed under Foundation Watch. And now, in their horrible post-death states, they've got a real axe to grind with their former tormentors. SCP-4973 are frightening ghosts that get revenge on the researchers who experimented on them, and 2419 are a set of laughing physical abominations that resulted from all the happy memories being extracted from D-class corpses for use in amnestic production. If these two teamed up, they'd be a deadly and terrifying anti-Foundation force that would likely leave mountains of SCP Foundation corpses lying in their wake. SCP-507 The Reluctant Dimension Hopper and SCP-2935 O oh Death Here's a not-so-fun fact we've all learned in the past few years. When somebody goes somewhere they shouldn't, then brings something infectious back, it's bad for everyone. And nobody goes to more places he shouldn't than SCP-507 also known as the Reluctant Dimension Hopper. Though in the poor guy's defense, he really doesn't choose where to go thanks to his random teleportation ability. However, if this resulted in a sudden trip to SCP-2935, an alternate dimension nicknamed O-Death, it would in turn result in the deadliest anomalous combination of all time. You see, 2935 is infected with the spirit of death itself, wiping out all life on every level even being the only being in all recorded realities capable of instantly and permanently killing SCP-682. And this spirit of death takes emissaries to spread it across dimensions, wiping out everyone as it goes and using Foundation distress signals to lure in its next unwitting harbinger of death. The Foundation has blocked off the physical entrance to this dimension in our world, but nothing is stopping 507 from being reluctantly teleported there. And when he gets back, believe us, he'll be bringing an interesting new friend with him. <sighs> and there you have it, folks. The combos that'll break you. What was your favorite deadly combination of SCPs we covered today? And do you have any ideas for killer combos that we didn't cover in this video? Let us know down in the comments. And remember, kids, when it comes to dangerous anomalies, teamwork makes the nightmare work. Now go check out Worst Ways to Die SCP Edition, and SCP-999 Tickle Monster vs. The Most Evil SCPs for more truly superlative anomalous experiences from SCP Explained.